Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is looking at the full moon in Virgo, which is occurring on February 24th at my time zone in the central United States. It will be at 6.31 a.m. I imagine that in most of the world it will be on this date. It's possible that in some places it will be right after midnight on the 25th, but, um, you know, general vicinity for most of the world, it will be on the 24th. And um, this has been called the snow moon in North American, Native American tribes. I get my information from Almanac. Dot com And what is so interesting is that they said that in February in North America, it's considered the snowiest month. Having um, lived my whole life in the Chicago area, I can tell you that this is this does not seem true to me. I really think January would qualify more as the snowiest month just based. I, I remember a blizzard that we had in 2011 in February, at the beginning of February, but no, I really think it would be January more than February, but there are certainly, um, other states that get a lot of snow. So maybe that's why they say that. Another name for it is the hunger moon. And, uh, I'm assuming it's because the hunting is not so great when it's this cold. Um, Black bear moon, uh, bear cubs are born at this time, raccoon moon, the Dakota tribe, groundhog moon. <laughs> yeah. We we had gr groundhogs day on February 2nd. And so far in the Midwest, we have uh, seen more like spring-like conditions. They said that we were going to have an early spring and it's kind of the groundhog was right about that. So anyway, um, this is going to be the full moon in Virgo, and it's going to be at five degrees of Virgo. At every full moon, the sun opposes it at the same degree. So we're talking about Pisces at five degrees. And an opposition is an interesting thing because an opposition is, we, we can look at it as polarity, but there is some sort of common theme, um, two signs, they're called complementary signs in astrology, even though they form that hard angle. And so with Pisces and Virgo, I do see, even though they're kind of like an odd couple, if you will, there's like this, this uh, area that they both represent similar themes, albeit in different ways. Um, Virgo, it rules the sixth house of health in astrology, and it deals with work or service to others. It is an earth sign, so it's an earth house. And so it deals with practical matters, your daily routine, so how you order your time. The 12th house is timeless because it's it's nebulous, you know, it's ruled by Neptune. The sixth house is ruled by Mercury, which rules mind and communication, things like that. Um, and the twelfth house with Neptune, it's otherworldly, it's fantasy, it's the spiritual realms, it's um, disillusion, or you could say sometimes disillusionment. The sixth house is very organized or into organization and into discipline. The twelfth house is into immersion, like merging with the cosmos, if you will, past lives. Um, the sixth house deals, like I said, with health, but the twelfth house can be hospitals and prisons, places where people are locked up or in the case of monasteries where they choose to uh, spend time in solitude or penance or something along those lines, contemplation. So um, the reason that they have some common elements is because 
I feel that the signs of Virgo and Pisces are both service oriented, but there's more, I feel like there's more, um, outright martyrdom with Pisces, meaning that there's like that Christ complex. So, um, with Virgo, the word that just came into my mind is duty, you know, but that is actually something that I would associate with the planet, uh, Saturn, um, more than the sign of Virgo. But yeah, I mean, it's like Virgo people or people with Virgo placements in their inner planets, if you will, can, can feel like they, um, have this desire to be productive. And this is something that feels worthwhile. Pisces, it's more like um, putting others first. So that's why I mean it's like self-sacrificial, if you will. But you can see those behaviors in Virgo as well. And this is why both of these signs can tend to be, I would say, codependent in relationships. And it's important to know that oppositions can really talk about our relationships with others. Because ultimately, when we're dealing with other people, sometimes it can be projections that we are engaged in, where we are... Um, you know, uh, thinking that somebody else is doing something to us or they're saying something to us because we had a parent who said those things and we're kind of putting it on that other person, even though it's really not the case. So, um, yeah, it's very interesting how these things can, can manifest. So, uh, because the sun is in Pisces, um, you could say it's running the show because uh, the moon reflects and the sun, I was going to say in the sun projects, but um, I don't know if that's, it's more active and the, the moon is feminine, it's more passive. So the sun is in this sign that is about illusion or deception or transcendence in a more positive light, you could say. And so there's always, you know, when we enter the season of Pisces, and I'm recording this on the 19th, and the sun has just entered this realm, um, you know, less than 12 hours ago, there's like this very, um, I don't know how to describe it. Sometimes like I, I think of when there's like a, um, the Pisces season, it's like this cozy blanket that kind of comes, I feel wrapped in because it's very spiritual or supernatural or hard to maybe ethereal. I don't know how else to describe it and the moon is going to kind of come forth in the sign of Virgo as this practical element to kind of bring us back down to earth about something. So Virgo, like I said, rules this area of practicality that has to do with health matters and the full moon can bring something to light that involves health. And, um, you know, when I look at Mercury, which can be the news, for instance, it could be almost like this. We have a conjunction at this time between Mercury and Jupiter. It can be like this tsunami of information that suddenly bursts forth. Uh, because the, the, the full moon is if you know coming to fruition something and when it's in conjunction with mercury it could be the media and 
So this can indicate that we find something out about what is occurring. What has been, maybe something that has been hidden, the full moon can bring out secrets. And, you know, I mean, truth be told, the, we've been getting people who have been wanting truth about certain things, they will actively uh, pursue it and they will know where to go already. There are still some people that do not understand that there are alternative sources of media or they dis, um, dismiss them as unreputable and that's just because of past programming. And I'm not saying that everything that is alternative media is just, you know, 100% accurate. Yes, of course, they may deal in rumors and they may, you know, it may prove not to be the case. But the, the point is there are people who are citizen journalists who have been making a name for themselves over the course of years, not just suddenly popping up and... um Yes, I do believe them. I do believe they have sources and that they are um, accurate more times than not. Um, but anyway, the point is, is that things may come out that may touch or reach the average person that is not actively pursuing these alternative channels for information. And even they will have to be like they will have to like uh, sit up and take notice because um, Virgo, because Virgo rules the sixth house, it can be like issues connected to health. And certainly there are these issues that, that could be even like that were kept secret that kind of come out in the mainstream. Another thing is that because Virgo is ruled by Mercury and Mercury rules not only Virgo, but Gemini, which Gemini rules the third house of the media, including social media. Um, by extension, that could be what's going on. And so this is where disillusionment can come into play. The sun versus the moon, the you know, how we, you know, what we want to focus on and our intuition, what our intuition tells us. So in other words, we want to believe the deception or we want to believe the fantasy of a situation. And yet we know, or we're being told, no, this is what is really happening. And our emotions have to be more, um, grounded, practical, whatever you want to call it, with it being in Virgo. And there can be that sense for some people of like, no, please no. I don't really want to know. Um so I but I but I do feel that there's that there's a lot of positivity around this full moon. Um when it's in an earth sign, um, I, I feel like the emotions, the, they don't have to dominate, although because the, the sun is in a water sign, it's kind of like, okay, well, it might be a little bit difficult, but, um, there is there, you know, for instance, um, the sun is in conjunction with Mercury. So, uh, the, it is in Pisces, but it is that it does give it a cerebral influence. And likewise, there's a, a sextile from the sun to Jupiter and a trine from the moon to Jupiter. So that is very positive in terms of um, how we feel about ourselves and how we, uh, and when I say feel about ourselves, I'm talking about with the sun, um, you know, the, the sun is ourselves, um, you know, in that outer sense of, of our goals and things like that. And, and the moon is our emotional nature and it is in the most harmonious angle to Jupiter, 
that is possible. The trine. And um, there is a square from Venus uh, to Jupiter. Uh, Venus is in Aquarius. And what that that can mean, uh, the, the Jupiter is in Taurus. And Jupiter in Taurus is very indulgent, self-indulgent in and of itself, uh, because, because, uh, v, um, Taurus is ruled by Venus itself. So when you have this square, you're really getting this Venusian energy, which is all about pleasure. And it, you know, because Venus and Jupiter are both benefic planets, even when they form hard angles, it's kind of like the Nine of Cups, where it's too much of a good thing, maybe. Or maybe Nine of Cups reversed in the tarot. It's not really, you can't really say, oh, it's horrible, but it could indicate, let's see what day of the week it is. Um, this is actually going to be on a Saturday. So <laughs> when we have full moons on Saturdays, I know this is the morning, but you have to, assume that the energy carries itself through for the for the weekend and that can indicate too much of a good thing excess likewise mars is forming a um conjunction i mean a, a square with with jupiter so mars is action and there can be a call to action and it could be uh, mars mars is also forming a a conjunction to Pluto, which is pretty intense, for lack of a better word. We have Pluto at one degree of Aquarius. So, um, Venus is also forming the, a conjunction to uh, Pluto as, as well. So, um, yeah, in relationships... Definitely look out for this because this can lead to power struggles with Venus in conjunction with Pluto, where it's like my way or the highway, and it's also in a fixed sign. Yes, it's Aquarius, but it's still a fixed sign. Uh, for the Venus and Mars, they're both in air, uh, Aquarius, so it's very uh, independent, nonconformist. It can be rebellious, and this can be in terms of, you know, societal, because, um, Aquarius is the collective. So it can be like, you know, revolutionary, but on a personal level, this can be like, I'm doing my own thing. And it's not very like interest in negotiating with somebody else. So that's where it gets problematic. Um, and I saw something else here. Oh yeah. Um, a conjunction between Venus and Mars. This is very feisty. This is very lusty in love. And so sometimes this is how things get a little bit distorted because, um, you might have people who are acting out of their own self-interest and wanting what they want and not really thinking about the other person. So if this is, um, Especially if you are a Virgo or a Pisces, this could be happening in your first and seventh houses of the self and the other. Um, I say could be because it depends on the degree. So it, it might be something that really is um, what you're grappling with. There's also some... Um, aspects to Saturn. Saturn can be the authority figure. And so that's why I say when you have the, these Aquarian, Aquarius, these uh, transits in, Aqu in the sign of Aquarius, and of course, Pluto is, you know, that's a, a long-term transit. So that goes without saying, but I'm talking about Venus and Mars at this time. Um, then you look at Saturn and the sun is in conjunction with Saturn. So that can indicate a sense of duty that we are undertaking. 
And, you know, for some people, like for instance, um, a person who's a soldier, they go into battle with that sense of duty, knowing that something may, may occur that is unwanted, but feeling like, you know, Saturn can be that sense of this is my job, or this is my, the career that I have uh, chosen for myself, or this is my karmic mission. Saturn is a Lord of karma. So, um, I mean, this could feel very faded, whatever it is that you're, you're choosing. So, you know, obviously it goes without saying, choose wisely, choose, you know, whatever it is that you feel called upon to do really think about, Hey, is this really in my highest interest? Is this what I really feel? Or am I getting swept away with the crowd? Because with this Aquarius energy, it's very social and it makes you feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself. And that can be very exhilarating, but it can be um, a bit, how would I put it? It can, it can make you um, do something that you later look back on and say, I was kind of influenced by other people. And that's a Piscean trait, by the way, because Pisces is a mutable water sign. So it's very malleable. And, and then you talk about the Neptune influence rulership, and that can be, you know, connected to illusion, illusory. So, um, yeah, looking at it from that point of view, but, and the moon is opposing Mercury. So, of course, the moon is our emotions and Mercury is our mind. So we talk about the mind and the heart and they, and, and really when I say the heart, it's not logic, it's intuition versus intellect. Okay. Now, when we get like, if we get a piece of news that triggers some people emotionally, they may push back on it because they don't want to hear it. And they'll say, no, that's not true. They'll just reject it out of hand. And then, it, and then they say, no, this is actually the case. And they are emotionally shutting it off because it is painful to hear this bit of news. So, realize that you are going to be tender because of the, the Pisces influence. And yeah, it's very interesting because we have the, the Pisces versus the Aquarius, which is detached. And then even the, the, the full moon in Virgo, Virgo is an earth sign. And likewise, you know, the earth and especially this earth sign that is ruled by Mercury wants to be rational. It doesn't want to be irrational. And so, yeah, but yet and still, you know, you have multiple uh, placements here, inner planets that are transiting through the sign of Pisces. And so that is just how it is. Um, you know, you can't escape the fact that this is something that it's going to be like, um, a dichotomy. It's going to be kind of like the two sides of the coin. And, um, you know, but we'll see what happens, but I, I, uh, wouldn't be surprised if there is some kind of major revelation. Of course, we keep hearing this, you know, people are waiting for the big reveal and everything like that. And we get things in dribs and drabs, and that makes things less dramatic. You know, sometimes there's like a major thing that occurs, but 2024 is supposed to be this major um, year for 
we could say disclosure, but just kind of like, um, a turning point, if you will. And so the other thing that I should have said at the beginning, <laughs> just in case people didn't stay for the end that I think is very interesting is that the date of this new moon for a lot of us is two, two, four, two, oh, two, four. So we have that sequence of numbers, just like in 2022, it was like two, 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 you know, I don't know. I don't think that was a full moon that day, but it was just like that sequence of numbers. We do have a zero for the year. That kind of is the only thing that is different there, but the zero is kind of the unknown quantity or quality. And that kind of adds that um, magic to it. So anyway, I hope that this um, has prepared you for what is to come. And if you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.